Hello, I'm Dave Abram. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Today we'll meet a local student who got an inside look at county government and the county executive goes for a little five kilometer run. But first, making headlines. It's been a busy month for Laura Newman, who is now officially in her second month of office. We wanted to update you on what she's done so far, in addition to that 5K that we'll get to in a minute. After promising a new start for county government, Newman named an evaluation committee to review staff in appointed positions. That group finished its work, and there have been several changes at the top of county government. As for the executive herself, she has been working through marathon budget briefings on a daily basis for two weeks now. Attendees of the meeting say she is very engaged and will present a budget that looks very different than past years. Of course, we'll keep you updated throughout the process. The budget will be presented on May 1st before the County Council and County Executive Newman's speech will be carried live on this channel. We should also mention the hiring of two new constituent service representatives. Amy Leahy is a Saverna Park resident and president of the Saverna Park Republican Women's Club. In case you didn't guess, she will be representing Saverna Park as well as West County. You can reach her at 410-222-1241 or email aleahy at aacounty.org. And Hope Stewart is an Eastport resident who works recently as a who worked recently as a senior program officer for the Asia Foundation, which is an agency that promotes economic development around the world. Hope will cover Annapolis and South County. You can reach her at 410-222-1527 or email hstewart at aacounty.org. Of course, you can also call the main number of the office if you need anything at all. 410-222-1260. Well, here we are again, Kristen. Here we are. Happy Easter week. Happy Easter. Happy Passover week. Yes. Any plans? Um, I don't know. I uh, no. no. No, not really. Easter egg hunt? No, I I do get my wife an Easter basket. Although I don't celebrate Easter, but I do get her an Easter basket, and she loves her Easter basket. Well, so we won't say honey, what's I'm uh, get you an Easter basket. I not promise. in this year's because it's we want to keep it a surprise for her. But what have what has been in the past? wife basket. Oh my god, she loves the worst kind of candy you would ever... Wait, like Cadbury eggs? Just, yeah. Marshmallow eggs? Yeah. Oh, that stuff is great. And, like, the, um, she likes the stuff where it's, like, more of a toy than candy. It's just the worst, like, sugary, like, the stuff where it's, like, it looks like a hairspray bottle and you spray something on something and then you dip something <laughs> and... Just, cool. uh, that's not for me. I, I like, like your style, Lady Abrams. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I like Snickers and stuff like that. You like real classic candy, you don't want to mess around, it's not a toy kind of thing. And and we need to tell the folks, we read about this in the newspaper today, that okay. there's a special Easter promotion in Annapolis at All right. Red Red Wine. Red Red Wine Bar. They okay. are going to have peeps dipped in, soaked, infused, if you will, with vodka. That sounds absolutely awful. I will not be partaking in any of that. Do you like peeps? I love peeps. Okay, so you like peeps. And the other ingredient as well. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but you don't think it sounds... I, I don't, don't know. I, I mean, don't like peeps. I Well, do you You have to prepare them correctly. Oh, you prepare pe peeps? Please, you should please microwave tell. them for 10 seconds before eating. Oh. I do enjoy a warm peep. Because they always taste kind of stale. I am curious about this vodka peep, though. Hey, it might be good. So what's your favorite Easter candy? Um, I like the I like the Cadbury eggs. Okay, I like the mini ones. Yeah, I like those. Those, and when I was little, I don't know if they have them anymore, they were called Nutty Buddies. It was like just peanut butter, it was kind of shaped like a coin. Mm -hmm. It was peanut butter with chocolate on the outside and it had um, this foil wrapping and it had a little bunny rabbit on it and it's called a Nutty Buddy. They were my very favorite. Okay. But you don't have any traditions at home, like dying eggs well, or? Well, you know, I come, you know, as you could probably tell from my name, I, I celebrate Passover. Yes. And I love macaroons. Right. Do you like macaroons? I do like macaroons. Chocolate macaroons are but good. But what about your wife? Does she celebrate Easter or? She'll do both. She'll do both. She's made the Passover dinner by the four and it was delicious. Oh, okay. Delicious. Nice. She makes a mean brisket. Okay. It's good stuff. Brisket. There you go. <laughs> well, don't look now, folks, but the action at the State House in Annapolis is going into the final stretch. The Maryland General Assembly will wrap up its work on Monday, April 8th. This week, they hopefully will pass a version of Governor O'Malley's budget and then get into the really heated debates and votes. Our insiders say that the budget part of the work in Annapolis is looking pretty good for Anne Arundel County mostly because there won't be any new big spending mandates coming out this year. 
Last year, the state began requiring counties to pay the cost of teacher pensions, which cost about $13 million last year and will cost $15 million this year. Last year, they were also required, uh, they also required counties to institute stormwater management fees, which could take effect this fall. But I said there are no new mandates this year. Meanwhile, everyone will be following developments on a possible gas tax hike, sweeping gun control laws, and hundreds of other bills proposed by state delegates and senators. If you want to follow all the developments in real time, there are some pretty good features on the General Assembly's website, including schedules and a link to listen live to proceedings. Just go to www.milis.state.md.us. Very nice. Have you ever gone to that long web address I before? have not, but I might go now. Well, actually, they've, um, um, there's a lot of new uh, features to it. Um, it, will, it will bounce you to another site, which is their new site, and now you can listen live, Kristen Lagana. Oh. So if you want to, you know, you're... To so the actual hearings. If you want to listen to the actual, actually now they're done with hearings, they're okay. doing the debates on the floor. So you can listen live. Well, they start at 10 a.m. every day and they go, you know... Last first. year I did watch some of the hearings. You did? Yeah, of, of, of recycling issues. Aha. Uh -huh. And what it, what recycling? What were the recycling? We had issues? the um, we were doing the plastic bag tax. I remember watching that one, uh, and also um, uh, talking about small businesses and stuff too. So I do remember watching those and um, just getting the language down to share with the rest of the group. So well, I've had the opportunity to sit through the budget um, preparations with the county executive this week, and I okay. learned something about recycling. What did you learn? Well, as you know, we always talk about how I am an avid recycler. Yes, you are. And you work in recycling. Yes. And I also learned a lot from the guru, Tracy Reynolds, who was hosting the show with you last That's right. week. She hey, taught Tracy. me a lot. She always taught me if if you're an avid recycler and there's something you think should be recycled, but, you're, but it, it's not currently accepted, go ahead and put it in there and you can kind of create a, a demand for it, and it may be recycled someday. But it all depends on if we have a market for it, if there's yes. someone to buy that product. Otherwise, it's just collecting. Yes, but anyway, so one of those things that I learned recently from you is the coat hangers. Or yes, the, the wire hangers. I'm sorry, the wire hangers. Yeah. And I learned yesterday plastic bags are accepted now. You didn't know that? No, because oh for, a no, for a long time they were not. <laughs> Right, we've been right? taking plastic, film plastics we call them, stretchy plastics. So anything that is a Ziploc, bubble wrap, plastic wrap, um, a newspaper bag, grocery bag, just not things like cookie bags and chip bags, those crunchy plastics are called cellophane. We cannot take them still. No cellophane. Time. No cellophane, but plasty, plasty, stretchy plastics, plasty. film plastics. We um, do take those. We do prefer that you bundle them in one for two reasons, and on a windy day, they won't blow all over the yard. On the second reason is because that stuff is still hand-picked out at the processor, makes it a little easier on that guy that does that job uh -huh. when everything's all in one bag instead of a bunch of little bags all over the place. But see, yeah. see, our viewers, folks, you are the biggest experts on recycling because we make sure we bring something to the table for yep. you every single week. Yep, so we do take those plastic bags. There you I'm go. glad you brought that up in case anyone out there was confused as to whether Good. we take I film plastics. I want people to know. But not crunchy plastics, no cellophane. <laughs> well, in this week's Recreation and Park Spotlight, Carolyn Ryan was out at Fort Smallwood Park for the Recreation Deeds 5K Run and Fun Walk. And some special guests were there with her. Carolyn. Well, we're out here at the Rec Deeds Challenge Run 5K, and we've got County Executive Laura Newman out here who joined us for the 5K, and this was your first 5K. Thank you first. so much. You're right, it was my first. I was I was really glad to finish. My goal was to get over the finish line. Well, you did awesome. You did it in style. And we are so excited to have you out here and helping us support Rec Deeds. Well, I just think that this is a really important, important part of what we provide to the community. I love to see people show up for these events. I love that it's so family oriented and physical fitness oriented. So I'm, I'm glad to support it. Well, here at Recreation and Parks, one of our big things is getting people up and getting them moving. And getting them moving this early on a Saturday morning is really incredible. So. Yeah, you know, quality of life is such an important part of our community, and these events only continue that and improve that. Great. Well, this is actually the first in our series of races this year, so hopefully we'll see you out oh at some goodness. of the others. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'll try my best. I'm not sure I'd go further than 5K yet, but my goal was a triathlon. 
Very good. We have one of those as well. I, I have some time to train though, right? Absolutely. <laughs> October. All right. Oh, I think I might need a little more than that, but um, I'm going to show up. Well, thank you again for being on the show. My pleasure. And thanks for being out here at the race. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we also have Councilman John Grasso out here with us. Good morning. For your first 5K as well. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. And the question was, could I do it? And I knew I could finish it. The question is, how many times was I going to stop? That was the question. <laughs> And I didn't stop. Awesome. Yeah. You came in. You came in great. Yeah, I got a cramp in my left leg right at the uh, guard station. I said, uh oh, never had that happen before. And it just kept on going and it worked it out. You know what I mean? Very good. Well, it could have been the jeans. Uh, that that might have been. been it, too. <laughs> you needed shorts on. Maybe that yeah, I keep I keep hearing I'm running handicap over here. And I had <laughs> Laura over here saying blue jeans. What's up? You know, but. You know, I didn't think anything of it, so. Well, we really appreciate you coming out and supporting Rec Deeds. is such a, an important part of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, one thing's for sure, ex exercise and the environment is a very big thing, I think, in probably all our, uh, our agendas. So it's an important thing to get the Anne Arundel County citizens out. Exercise, we're in good shape. Very That's good. what it gets down to. Very good. Well, keep moving. We'll see you out at the next race, both of you, maybe even at the triathlon. And I was just going to take this opportunity. I'm thinking to myself, why am I drinking deer water? We could have the county's water here, pure water. I messed there up on that go. one, didn't I? <laughs> next time that won't happen. Next time. Very good. Thank you both for being on the show and coming out and supporting Rec Deeds. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carolyn. Good for County Executive Newman and Councilman Grasso for getting out there and promoting health, exercise, and adaptive recreation. Running season is now upon us, so we'll be sure to keep you informed about all the events this spring and summer. There's more Week in Review to come, including our interview with Dylan Robinson, a local high school student who got an inside look at county government this week. Check out our community calendar for events around your county. We'll be right back. of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Folks, welcome back. We have a really special guest today. Dylan Robinson, the pride of Glen Burnie High School, is joining us. Dylan, thank you for being on the show. You're and now, Dylan uh, is participating in student model government, and I'm sure she will tell you she had the distinct privilege of, <laughs> of joining me today and learning what my job is all about. Distinct so. privilege. Now, Dylan, tell us a little bit about student model government and what you did for student model government. Well, I wrote an essay in government. It was about if you were a part of the county executive staff, what would you do to change how the county is run? And in my essay, I was saying that I would add more sufficient police officers to schooling because one police officer is not going to help in a serious situation. And I said things like that. And then we did a mock debate about recycling and businesses. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. Yes. And we did another debate about legalizing synthetic marijuana, which is pretty interesting to hear what kids had to say about that. Just out of curiosity, what was your stance on the recycling and businesses mock debate? <laughs> um, I think that it is a good idea. Oh. Well, she's clearly very intelligent, so. She's got the right idea. Yeah, though. I'm thinking. Now, I want to hear, Dylan, more about your day with Dave. What did you do today? Did you learn anything? What do you think about county government and how it's run? I mean, 
when I first thought about county government, I was thinking it was going to be so serious. And I'm not saying that they're not serious, but they... <laughs> What'd you do today? <laughs> <laughs> they just had, like, a more relaxed atmosphere than I expected. And I learned that he wrote a lot, does a lot of press releases and a lot of emailing. He does good things to make the county executive look good. And Thank you, Dylan. Well, there you go. I do try. There you go. And, uh, you know, I'm sure everything that Dave was doing, and this is kind of the precedent we set around for our, all of the um, divisions in county government, is we're here working for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what we're doing a lot of customer service. And I'm pretty sure probably a lot of the stuff you were writing today and working on today was going towards that. So. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, we, I, I gave her an overview. You know, Dylan is, is um, actually um, way beyond where I was in high school acad <laughs> academically. Tell us, really? You know, since then <laughs> I've since then I've accomplished some things. I'd but say. but when I was her age I wasn't quite at, I didn't have everything figured out and mm -hmm. um, um, Dylan does not have a career path in government planned. But, oh, okay. I, but I think she did see some things that she found interesting. But tell us about the, you're, you're a part of the magnet program. Tell us about that a little bit. I go to Glen Burnie High School and I'm a part of the Biomedical Allied Health Magnet Program there. We study different type of medical topics and, you know, things like mo mostly the ethics and moral things that go into medical, not only the medicine side, but the business side of it too and how it comes together. Oh, wow. No, I'm imagining because of the location where Glen Burnie High School is, do you do a lot of um, any kind of internships with this program with BWMC? Are you working over at Baltimore we, Washington Medical Center at all? Or? With the, our age, mm -hmm. we don't do a lot of internships yet, but we go on job shadows and oh, okay. visit like Anne Arundel County, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arundel Medical Center oh, okay. and places like that. And That's nursing, so we went to a nursing home. So Biomedical Allied Health is right. the magnet program that you're doing. I find that pretty amazing for a high school student because I think I was doing theater and band. So that's pretty you can, amazing. Kristen, you can be <laughs> self-deprecating too, see? Yay! I mean, I wasn't doing, I was telling Dylan this, I mean, when, when I was in high school uh, quite a few years ago, um, you couldn't take an AP class until you were a junior in high school. Right. Now you can take it freshman year. I just we learned. Have that either, yeah. I just learned the other day that they have IB International Baccalaureate for elementary school now. Oh my gosh! You couldn't do that until high school. Now Dylan takes, you know, is going to be taking several AP classes, and she's in a magnet program, and they do like really smart biology stuff that I, you know. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I think it's quite a testament to what an amazing uh, board of ed we have here in the county. I mean, we didn't have these magnet programs either when I was in school. And yeah. I know that some of the high schools, um, there are more performance-based magnet right. programs, which would have been really cool when I had been going to school. Um, you have biomedical allied health. Right. You have, STEM. Um, I think, STEM. Yeah, STEM there's a lot more math either. stuff. I know at um, South River, where I went, they've got um, a lot more stuff with robotics. Right. So it's, a, it's really interesting to me. It's amazing. A lot more opportunities for students these days, absolutely. And it, it's awesome because with all the job situations that we've been facing, it's like they're really prepping students for great career paths and giving you more of an option of what you can attain when you get out of, out of high school. So Now, that's all great. Yeah. But Kristen... The most important thing to me is I learned some things from Dylan. What did you today. learn from Dylan? I learned some new slang. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I, I pride myself on being up with the lingo. <laughs> Make sure this is suitable for TV. It is suitable, okay. absolutely. <laughs> um, it's, it's oh gash. <laughs> oh gash. Right? Gash. Gash. G A S H. Like a cut, like a gash. Like gash. A, like yes. a, oh, explain gosh. that for our viewers who don't oh, understand. Gash. Like if something like. How can I say it? Like, if something happens and it's like very surprising, or like it's like, whoa, you say, oh gosh, oh my gosh. Instead of, oh my gosh. So it's yeah, like, oh, oh my gosh, with a really heavy, thick accent from because like. Because it's maybe serious. The... It's more serious than, oh my gosh. It's, oh my gosh. Like, well, gosh, I can't believe it's that's serious. Like, You're bleeding. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> gosh. Can you do it? Oh gosh. <laughs> so you need to work on it a little bit. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> next. Um, and then the other one was, what was the other one? Ratchet. Ratchet. Oh, I know, Ratchet. Okay. <laughs> Do you really? So why doesn't she tell yeah. us about ratchet? So what's ratchet? When it's like disgusting, like wretched. Ra ratchet could be disgusting. It could be like just trashy. Like mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh my gosh, she is so ratchet. See, see she used both stuff. together. Do you see that? 
Oh my god. Oh gosh. That girl. Oh gosh. That is ratchet. And I know ratchet. <laughs> well, you can't I'm, stop me. Well, folks, I am very <laughs> proud of myself for learning the late. I like to keep up on the latest. You can hang. Latest. You hung with Dylan. I'll get day. there a little bit, and, and it was it was really a pleasure to have Dylan today, oh. and um and and we had a good time, and you know she did a little media and PR. She uh. She appeared on our show. She was nice enough to appear on our show today. Yeah, thanks so. for coming. And best so, of luck with everything you're doing, Dylan. Thank you. Great. And go Gophers, right? Go Gophers. Yeah. Right. Gophers. Folks, we're going to take another break, and we will be right back after this. Oh, gosh. <laughs> gosh. All right. Give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to more than 1,318 calls for service. This included 1,043 emergency medical calls and 95 fire calls. This week, a suspicious fire damaged a home under construction, a two-alarm fire injured a firefighter, and a county rescuer was honored at an awards ceremony. To tell us more about these events is Division Chief Keith Swindle of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief. Thanks, Kristen. At 3.15 a.m. on March 24th, firefighters were dispatched to a reported dwelling fire on the 500 block of Lincoln Drive in Glen Burnie. The first unit to arrive on the scene reported a small fire on the second floor of a two-story family home that is currently under construction. Crews were able to quickly bring this one alarm incident under control within 20 minutes. The damage was estimated at $250. Fire investigators have determined the fire to be incendiary in nature, however, the exact cause remains under investigation. We are asking anyone with information relating to this incident to contact investigators at 410-222-TIPS or at arsontip at aacounty.org. At 1230 a.m. on March 25th, Anne Arundel County firefighters were dispatched to a reported dwelling fire on the 400 block of Beach Drive in Arnold. The first unit to arrive on the scene reported fire evident from a two-story single-family waterfront home. Crews immediately requested additional resources, bringing approximately 61 firefighters to the scene. The two-alarm incident was brought under control at 3.15 a.m. No one was home at the time of the incident that caused an estimated $365,000 in damage to the home, as well as minor damage to an adjacent dwelling. One firefighter was injured battling this blaze and was transported to Anne Arundel Medical Center in Annapolis with minor burns. The cause of the fire remains under investigation. Finally, the Maryland State Council of the Knights of Columbus has named a member of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department as their 2012 EMT of the Year. Firefighter EMTP Christopher Chase was honored in a ceremony at the Founders Day Mass and Awards Dinner in Baltimore. Firefighter Chase is a five-year employee of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department and a lifelong county resident. In the past year, he has been involved in several high-profile incidents and has surpassed performance expectations on every call. Fire Chief John Robert Ray, who attended the event, stated, Firefighter Chase embodies the characteristics of an excellent employee. He is dependable, has a strong sense of purpose, and is self-directed and confident. Back to you, Kristen. Thanks, Chief, and congratulations to Firefighter Chase on his achievement. Now in this week's Senior Spotlight, Carla Schaefer has an interview about a program where all the answers you need are just a phone call away. Carla. Thanks to you in the studio. Well, today my guest is Kim Yates, who's the director of the RSVP and Telephone Reassurance Programs at the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. Welcome to Week in Review, Kim. Yes, thank you for having me. Well, first of all, can you tell our viewers and listeners, what does RSVP stand for? RSVP, RSVP is the acronym for Retired and Senior Volunteer Program. And under that program, there are several other programs, one of which is the Telephone Reassurance Program. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? The Telephone Reassurance Program is a program where I have two volunteers in our Glen Burnie office um, every morning, Monday through Friday, from 7.30 to 10, 
placing calls to homebound, frail, seniors and or disabled um, residents of the county. Uh, then I have another lady that does it on the weekends and holidays. So basically the person that's getting the call, the client, is called every single day of the year, holidays, weekends, and everything. It sounds like a really important resource for people in our county who are homebound and who may live alone. Right, because some of these people don't have family or friends or relatives in the area. So when we call, if we can't get a hold of that person, then we will call any emergency contacts that we do have. And if they can't reach the person, then we do call 911. And there have been times when a police officer is dispatched to the home. And unfortunately, sometimes it's not a good outcome. In most cases, it's okay. Sometimes the client just forgets that they had a doctor's appointment and they weren't home to receive their call and we will track them down, <laughs> call doctors and hospitals to find where they are, you know, or if they've gone to rehab, anything that could happen to them, we try to make sure that they're, they're safe and that we hear from them each and every day. Okay, so if there is someone out there who's homebound and interested in enrolling in the program, how do they do that? They can call my office at 410-222-6712, um, ask to speak to me, or they can leave a message and I send them a, a pamphlet that they fill out and what they'll do is just give me their name and their phone number, their address, their emergency contacts and we do the phone calls in half hour increments so they have to let me know if they want to be called say between 7.30 and 8 or 8 and 8.30 because that's the time frame that we will call them and we will call them during that time. Um, so just basically a phone call to me. Okay, and on the flip side, what about those out there who are interested in becoming a volunteer? How do people get more involved and how do you select your volunteers? Well, the same way I recruit um, through advertising, being on this show, um, and we're always looking for volunteers because, like I said, but it's in the Glen Burnie office. So a lot of times the volunteers are seniors themselves. So there's a turnover. So I'm always looking for new people to, to help out and it's very satisfying and rewarding to these individuals, the ones that volunteer because they are making a difference in people's lives. That phone call that they get may be the only phone call they get all day, mm -hmm. the only person they speak to and, all day. And I imagine sometimes they just call and chat for a yes. while. And, and mm -hmm. the volunteers get somewhat familiar with the people mm -hmm. because they're calling them on a week weekly basis and the, the individual can volunteer as much as they want. They can do one morning a week once every two weeks, or they can do it every day, you know, mm -hmm. it's up to them. So even people with jobs can become volunteers right. if they have a little bit of time to give. Yes, from 7.30 to 10 in the morning is all I need. And I understand that you have a few upcoming events? Yes, I have a recognition that we have annually at Michaels 8th Avenue for all of the RSVP volunteers, which is one of the benefits of becoming a volunteer with RSVP. I do have other programs under RSVP besides telephone and short reassurance also. So anytime you're one of the RSVP volunteers, you're invited to the luncheon. It's a pretty big deal. It is, and it's a nice place to have it as yes. well. So that's, yeah, definitely if you're interested in volunteering, yes. just uh, call the Department of Aging and Disabilities. Yes. It sounds like a very important program for those in our county, Kim. Yes, it is. It's very, very satisfying for me also to see the effect that we have on people and especially like you know through the hurricane and through winter storms it's very crucial that these people have outreach mm -hmm. well thank you so much for coming on the show today thank you for having me i'm carla schaefer public information officer with the anne arundel county department of aging and disabilities back to you in the studio thanks carla and kim there are so many great services available from the department of aging and disabilities and a lot of them are free so get out there and take advantage on March 23rd, 2013, at approximately 9 p.m., officers were dispatched to the residence at the 100 block of Southway Drive in Severna Park for a report of an underage drinking party. This was the third such call in four months at this address. Joining us now is Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy with more details. Justin. As the first officer arrived, the officer saw juveniles walking out of the residence with cans of beer in their hands. That officer then opened the door and found the home full of juveniles consuming alcohol. Several subjects fled from the home before additional officers arrived, but they were able to detain 22 individuals, one of whom fell out of a second story window as he attempted to avoid detection by officers. Fortunately, he was uninjured and brought in with the rest of the subjects. All the individuals were under the legal drinking age and in the possession of alcohol, and the adult homeowner was determined not to be at home. In total, 
22 juvenile male and females between the ages of 14 and 17 were charged via citation with underage liquor law violations. That's civil. Now, due to their various states of intoxication, the juveniles were all detained at the residence until officers were able to contact their parents who responded to take custody of their children. And the Eastern District will be looking into this matter further. We're going to move on to our second incident now, which took place on March 24th around 1 p.m. That's when officers from the Western District responded to the 3600 block of Laurel Fort Meade Road in Laurel for a report of a stolen automobile. Now, while en route, information was received that a 2005 Nissan was stolen and traveling eastbound on Route 32. The stolen vehicle was followed by a citizen who saw the theft. The vehicle was last seen turning on Blue Water Boulevard. An officer in the area located that stolen vehicle at Blue Water Boulevard in Briar Ridge Lane and was able to stop the stolen vehicle. That suspect was arrested without incident. Investigation revealed that the suspect stole the vehicle while it was being detailed at that aforementioned gas station. The suspect in this case is Travis Lamar Greenfield, age 21, of Laurel, Maryland. Now, folks, if you have any information on the crimes or suspects mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. That number, 1-866-7-LOCKUP. You can also text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274-637. Your third option, go ahead and visit the website at www.metrocrimestoppers.net. Remember, Phone calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might be eligible for a cash reward as well of up to $2,000. Back to you. Thanks, Justin. Those were two pretty wild stories, Kristen. I tell you. And, you know, this is serious stuff. Yeah, but, it is. I mean, you know, a kid falls out of a, a, win a window and survives. Um, and then we have an alert citizen who follows a, a car that's stolen and is able to, you know, let police know and, and foil the crime. You know, serious stuff, but Kristen Lagana, did the party bring back memories? Whoa, 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 whoa. I did not drink until I was of age. Okay. Yeah. So there were no out of control parties at the Lagana household in Davidsonville. The Lagana okay. household. I learned my lesson pretty young. Le I think at the I kept Lagana Manor. Asking Is it my Lagana Manor. The, yeah, the Lagana Cabana. Oh, the Lagana Cabana. I remember being little, and I kept asking my dad, I'm like, oh, I want to try beer. I want to try beer." And he made me drink a whole thing, and I, I did not touch it. Oh, smart. So that was a very smart thing my dad did when I was little. Another Lagana public service amount. There you that's, go. That might work. That's that's. So right. and and um, do you have? I forget, do you have brothers or sisters? I do, I have a little sister, Vicky. Oh, you have a little sister? Yes. So you also set a good example for your younger sister that you will not have parties when your parents are away. That's correct. Plus, my parents never went anywhere. They never went anywhere. Why would you want to go anywhere when your vacation's right at home? I, I just can't really relate. <laughs> I, it was not like that when I grew If up. they went on vacation, we usually went with them, so. Okay. I can't remember any time my parents ever did it. Yeah, they didn't really give us a chance, but I'll tell you what, though. I have two of the coolest people for parents. I prefer now yes, to actually party with them, my parents. You thanked them two weeks ago. I did. I love them. For making a rock star I and all this them. stuff. They're awesome I, people. I want to thank my parents. I want to thank you should. Ed and, and Kathleen. You, 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 know, you did a marvelous job. Some may disagree. Outstanding. But, no. but I'll say you did a marvelous job. Do you job. like to hang with them, though? I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think my parents are really cool people. You know, my dad and I, we go to we go to um, spring training, or we went to spring training yeah. recently, and that was a good time. You know, we talk about baseball and sports and stuff. And, yeah, um, I always and, have a good time with and them. And my mom is politics. My mom likes to talk about politics. Yeah. We won't go there today on this program. We kind of leave that out of the living room as well. Yes. Politics, so yeah. I don't know. When it comes to Week in Review, we just give you the facts. We just want the facts. Just the facts. Just the facts. <laughs> By the way, police advise that if you witness a crime, please call 911 and don't try to engage a suspect. Um, this person did the right thing by following the car and letting the police handle it. Now, um, so, so that's the right thing to do. Yeah, Kristen. don't try to be the hero. Don't chase down don't, people. Don't you know. do that. I mean, you don't want to do anything like that. But Dave, without further ado, it's time for our favorite time. Laugh, laugh. What's that? Oh. Laugh, laugh. We wanted That's to do another music one this week. This video is pretty hot. It's not hilarious by any means, but it's something very interesting for you to watch. This has almost 1 million views already. Um, just to set this up a bit, you've heard of Jimi Hendrix, right? Yes, of course. Jimi Hendrix right. played left-handed, revolutionized um, electric guitar. Yes. Um, is the father of rock and roll, really. Yes, uh, created some riffs that everyone can recognize. I mean, Most people, yes. <laughs> 
Exactly. Like that. Okay, but have you ever heard of a gay again? A what? A gay again. A gay again. No. Okay. We'll take a look. Well, that was pretty amazing. Yes. I, are you a Hendrix fan? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I love Hendrix, and li I could listen to that all day. Well, okay, let me, now first of all, let me tell you that the girl in the video, her name is Luna Lee. And, yes. And she's been posting these videos for about two years, and she's obviously a Jimi Hendrix fan because she also does Bold of, as Love. Yes, and I love that one. I watched that one after I watched this one. So. And she dabbles in all, she has Maxwell and like And I like Maxwell too. I like her taste in music. Traditional stuff. Yeah. Traditional. She plays beautifully. How do you say that thing again? Gaigam. Gaigam something. Gaigam. But, but I noticed Gaigam, something Gaigam. that I hope you also noticed, Kristen. Okay. Um, she's got uh, wires coming out of the end of this instrument. Kind of like a guitar does sometimes. It's amplified. Mm -hmm. So that got me thinking. She's playing Hendrix on this bizarre kind of traditional thing. Yeah. And it's electric. Correct. Now, what did Hendrix also bring to the music world? Oh. The wah well, wah pedal. See. That's what she needs a pedal. She needs, she needs a, a pedal board. She could yeah, do wah wah she could be and doing distortion a lot more. and all kinds of crazy effects that would take this to it. I think we need to email I, her. Yeah, I, I know you're watching this, Luna. We need to email I know you're Luna watching. and we let can her know because I think so, she can do more with this. Yeah, we, we would really love it if you could use a wah wah pedal on your gaigam. And can you play a gaigam? No, but I would love to learn that thing. It sounds so soothing. I yeah, bet it's, it's a big cool. stress reliever. It's pretty cool. It sounds gorgeous. And I never thought about taking that instrument and putting classic rock to it. I'm wondering now what other cool traditional instruments you could, you know, maybe harp, maybe, you know, something, a harpsichord. Possibly. Doing some classic rock covers on that. Now you sing, do you play guitar? I, I would love to learn to play guitar, I play piano. Oh, okay. It probably wouldn't be that I hard play piano. since I, I play, understand music theory. I play guitar, but, but I don't know piano. I would love to learn. But I'm um, very out of practice, I need to get some practice in. I have a cousin who's pretty famous that plays guitar, jazz, in the jazz world. Tom Lagana, he plays around here a lot, but he's like internationally known for jazz guitar. I think I've heard of Tom He's Lagana. He's awesome. He's an, an amazing player. And we've well, talked about, we talk shop sometimes and I will trade some piano lessons for some guitar lessons eventually. But well, he's amazing. Well, speaking of players. Players. I believe that we have a very exciting time coming up. We, we do. Have opening day. Opening day is, is, is around the here. corner. It's like my favorite day besides my birthday and Christmas. So like you're a huge baseball fan. I like baseball. I, 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 I liked that. baseball before I liked football. Really? Yep. And you know, it's so funny to me because some people think the game is boring, but I love being at the ball field. See, but okay, but you're talking about the, you know, the the scene and the 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 experience. Even watching more it on TV, I love. Okay. I have never. People think it's boring, and I don't. I understand that um, football is more physical, a lot more action. But I like the skill associated with baseball. I like that um, you come to expect and rely on these skills of these players. And you like the strategy. I do, and I, I like the strategy too. I'm, I'm a big fan of baseball. So when there's two outs in the bottom of the ninth, you're like, bring in the, it's time to bring in the lefty, or you need to go to the DH, or whatever, you're in all that? Yeah, I mean, I like watching what the patterns are and who they're using and, and seeing how um, these young players are hon honing their skills and, 
the amazing players they become. I find it very exciting. Well, so. I, I always grew up. Um, and it's warmer when you go watch baseball. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I grew up. My my dad always watched the Orioles and the and the um, Redskins, and so that's where I got a lot of my, you know, the the Bullets and the Wizards came later. All By right. the way, John Wall had 47 points the other night. So I did hear that. It's time I to get on the were. Wizards bandwagon, folks. Okay. If you don't know about that. Gotcha. So you're, but when it comes to baseball, you're still Baltimore. You're not a. I am an Nats not, fan. Not, you are a Nats fan? Yes, yes. You um, went there too? Yes. And okay. um, Redskins, I've always been a Redskins fan. I know fan. you have. I grew up Orioles fan, and um, I was very um, – um, I, I, I lost my love for the Orioles a little bit when Cal Ripken retired. Right. Every game of my life I ever went to, it's, it's Cal a, Ripken played in that game. That's an amazing thing that may not ever sure, happen for anyone again. But it's a tough ride when you're an Orioles fan. And then I sure. didn't like what happened to the team after then. Right. And I was a, I've always been a, I considered myself someone who grew up in the D.C. area and identified with that. And then here come the Nationals. And so, New exciting team. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm not being a bandwagon person. No, I, I know like you're not. But I'm saying now the, you understand my little bit of love for when the Ravens came in, where it was just like something exciting. And, fair enough. You know, groundbreaking, and you want to get. And in. also, we should mention that the Orioles and the Ravens came to an agreement. The Ravens are going to yes. do an away game yes. to accommodate the. What Orioles are your thoughts game. on this? I did want to ask you about that. I'm all for peace and love in the realm, and for Baltimore but, solidarity. And okay. You, you work it out. You are, do what you got to do. This was my point of view, and see if you agree with me in this or not. But I feel like we constantly bend backwards for the NFL, and I feel like this game uh, was already scheduled. You're not just talking about the Orioles backing down. You're asking Chicago back down too. So that's really unfair, right there. And then. Secondly, they wouldn't have had a problem if they had put the game on Wednesday night instead of Thursday night. And all this stuff about Passover and all that, or Rosh Hashanah, I'm sorry, that, you know, they couldn't have a game on that. They have played Rosh Hashanah before. They play Christmas Eve. They play Christmas Day. That's bogus. Lagana, no, you just, don't watch football on Wednesday. At no, least not okay, yet. But first of all. There was so much hype about the Ravens, and I went to the Tuesday Day Parade in the middle of the day on a work day, and that place was packed. Okay. You can't tell me that they would not have a problem selling out that stadium, even on a Wednesday night. First game back, Baltimore fans at home, that's where the game should be. I think that having this game on the road is a big mistake. Wow. I do. And I think that they either should have done it Sunday before or the Wednesday before. But I don't understand why it had to be that Thursday. I don't think it was very relentless the whole it's entire. Football. And they do and it that's, that way, and that's it. That's the attitude, and that's the problem. Well, I'm I'm just glad that we came to an agreement. I think it's fine for both sides. With for an to away go. game for the first game for the Super Bowl champs, I disagree. Oh, I, so I misunderstood what you're saying. Okay, I I think it's fine. No, I think they should have had it a different night. You know what? Defending your Super Bowl championship in football is really rough, and yeah. I've already said this. Elvis has entered the building. I know. I am excited about Elvis. fantastic. It but, is, but, but Baltimore no Pride, you want to have that game at home. You can still have – I'm sure the fans will be very excited to have their first game, you know, at home after that. It's not – I, I disagree. Deal. It's so, not a big deal. Maybe if it was the Redskins, you'd feel differently. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> but it's not, so I don't. Whatever. <laughs> Folks, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv and YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free video podcast at iTunes or like us on Facebook at Arundel TV. Please tune in next week for more highlights and news from around the county. We'll see you next time.